guys tearing into the 06 pull the valve cover off and I found this right below the cam right there so what's everybody's guess put it down in the comments personally I'm going with uh, I think I'm gonna go with a lifter cup or, you know the lifters which are those cups that go over the intakes so put down in the comments what you guys think it is all right, guys, let's pull this thing off, see what happened. There's one. Oh, son of a freaking gun. I just dropped that stinking ring down in there. Oh, yeah. The magnet to the rescue, folks. All right, let's pop this. Oh, you know what? Crap, I should have put it in the right spot. It's that bottom dead center. Ooh. Oh, I think we found it, folks. See that? This cam might be toast. Ooh, it feels like it. Oh, yeah, this cam's done. Let me get this chain tensioner unloosened. Or uh, loosened up. Big reveal. Oh, I was right. I knew that's what it was. Just beat that to a pulp. Holy cow, folks. So who guessed it? Who was right? That's nuts. So you notice that the valve is not sitting up there. So the keepers are gone. And this don't look too bad at all. This don't look bad. Let's see if the valve moves. Because if it doesn't, then it's probably bent because it hit the top of the piston. Oh yeah, she's moving. Oh, look what I found down here. Wow. So that's the little, the little button on the inside of the lifter. So this is supposed to go in there. So we got some pieces to find. We got one. I'd say there's probably two more if it broke in chunks. So that's the only thing is finding the rest of this stuff. Oh, there's one keeper. And it doesn't look like it's in very good shape. Oops. Oh, it might not be all right. Or it might not be bad. I think that was just a reflection. Uh, I don't know. We got more stuff. The cam's messed up too, though. You'd think that everything would be right here. I think I'm gonna pop this rocker arm out. Just taking this plug out on the 
right side of the engine so I can get this out of here. That. It's on the right side of the head. Pull this out and then you can pull the pin that holds the rocker, the rocker in. The rocker arm pivot. Let's hope we find everything sitting right here. Oh man, there's the shim. There's the rocker. I think we got all our pieces. There's the shim. Only thing I'm missing is the other keeper. So the races aren't until practice starts at 7 p.m. tomorrow, so I don't know what's going to happen. Especially if I don't find this other keeper. Makes me wonder if, because I've been seeing a little bit of shavings. No, there's no way. Oh, oh I thought I had something. Well, the oil's coming out either way. So, that's what it's supposed to look like. It's funny because I had a feeling that that's what happened because this is what happened to this other bike. I have a 2007. And when I pulled it apart, the left side intake valve stem broke off at the keeper valley and uh, ended up jacking up that way. And one of the lifters was cracked in the middle, so I got a new lifter. One of the springs was missing a coil. Not really getting any shavings or anything. I wonder if that's the shavings that I've been seeing in here. It's really too bad that other keeper's not right here. Just making sure I'm getting everything. So, I don't see the keeper. So I'm thinking it's down in the crankcase on the left down below the chain still feels like it's got compression I mean as much as it can for the <laughs> exhaust valve being down or the intake valve being down there's no way that that wore all today well I'm gonna call it a night give myself time to think make a game plan which I'm gonna have to say is taking the head off, draining the oil, draining the coolant, taking the header off, the hoses off. Like I said, drain the oil and then take the head off, take the left case cover, which is the flywheel cover off, and then go from there. So you gotta find that keeper. All right, here we are the next morning. Well, there's the other cotter, so I got it. But, here's the other fun stuff. <laughs> oh man. So, that is the oil pump driven gear. And I found the cotter right below it, right there. So, I'm thinking what happened is that the cotter hit that, got caught up in there maybe, and um, I think it hit it just enough to where it just started, to where it just messed it up, and uh, just tore it up because I found the driven gear was laying on the bottom here. It was laying on the bottom right there. So, um, there's little tiny pieces of nylon everywhere so um, I gotta take this off because I got a new cha uh, cam chain coming today so I'm gonna take off the flywheel um, and clean that up there's not really a whole lot in there there were some nylon shavings that were 
on top of the reservoir screen so that's good um, all of this stuff right here this is all that I pulled out mostly from the spark trigger coil on the stator here's the stator cover I found a lot of stuff a lot of shavings I would say 90% of any shavings were attached to the spark trigger coil and obviously it's off because I cleaned it so uh, I gotta get a new gasket on there I was trying to pop this thing out seems like it's I think the o-ring in there is making it a little tough for it to pop out so I'm gonna get that out clean any garbage out of there I already cleaned this whole thing up pretty good and so I am gonna have to go well another thing too all of this right here is that's all nylon and that was all right here in this little valley next to the reservoir so that's just from the gear uh, use some q-tips to clean that out but yeah as you can see this thing is chewed up so I'm gonna have to I don't think I'd be able to slip this thing on there just you know if I had another one which I do on that other 250 so I'm gonna pull that off so I, gotta, I believe what I'm going to have to do is drain the clutch oil anyway, because it needs to be. But I think I'm going to have to loosen up the gear on the other side. Loosen up the nut, the retaining nut for that gear over there for the balance shaft. And then that will allow me to slide, I think. I don't know. Um, I don't even know if I'll be able to do that. So I'm going to see if I can easily slip that other gear on there. And if I can, good. If not, then, yeah, the engine's going to have to come apart. And then at that point, I may as well just get a new one. So the plot thickens. Um, I will get some more stuff done and keep you guys posted where I'm at. Okay, so what I did here is I ended up loosening up the, I took the brake off, this rear brake from the pivot, and then removed the kickstarter. I cleaned this up real well, that way I didn't get any junk up in there, uh, in the seal when I pulled it off. Uh, I brushed it, wiped it, and then hit it with some brake cleaner, and then blew it off real well, wiped it again. Undid all these for the uh, right side case cover pulled that off and then all I did is I just stuck a screwdriver up in these gears right here that locks it and I was able to loosen up this nut right here and that allowed me to push this shaft alright so now I have enough clearance or at least I should have enough clearance get this guy up in here hoping at least it's right about there I might have to go a little bit further it's almost there but I don't want to misalign everything Okay, let's see if we can slip this guy up under here now. The gear might slip off the other side.
Okay, I can get it on there, but I... That's what I needed right there. Those little pins got to be lined up just right. There we go. All right, good deal. And I'm going to go put that nut back on the other side. So we are back at this other side here. And just to verify, I want to make sure that these two gears are lined up here. So these two dots right here, you want them lined up. And that'll line up the counter counterbalance shaft to the engine. And the whole point is to counterbalance the vibration of the crank and piston. So we got that. Let me go ahead and put our water pump gear on. There's the water pump gear isn't a big deal because it's It's just driving the water pump. There's no time to do it. But it does go on a certain way. It's a little bit of a notch on the gear. And it goes over certain teeth. Let me put the nut on. This gets torqued to 32 foot-pounds. That's it. All right, so we can go ahead and Put all this back together. I won't bore you with that. Just clean your gasket up. Uh, put the cover back on. Put all the bolts back on in the right order. And then torque them down. I believe they're like six or seven foot pounds. There's a couple ways that you can lock up the crank and flyaway on stuff. You want to make sure that um, you got everything in order and that you're ready to pull a flywheel. Well, the reason I'm doing it is so I can change my timing chain because I'm going to be putting a new head on this. You can wedge something in here and that will allow you to loosen up this flywheel nut here. What I did, as you just heard, is I wedged a just a small screwdriver in between the gears on the other side of the outer basket for the clutch just this and just wedged it in there on the bottom and then I was able to loosen up the nut. You have your piece that goes over, I believe this is some, I might need a refresher here. So that just goes on to the, so this will end up pushing on there. This just slips over. Just thread it in and then you're going to get a wrench and hold it here and then crank here.
there you go all right so I just popped the chain off here and I don't really see let me just go through and make sure you want to make sure that none of these links are broken if you're going to reuse it but better safe than sorry they're 50 bucks just get a new one new timing chain gear looks fine on the crank and a lot of the times what you'll see is wear on these teeth here which it's kind of hard to tell but so I'm putting a new one in there got it all parked heads rebuilt putting that in there may as well you know do it right so the next thing to do is to pop the head off um, and then, uh, gonna go ahead and re reassemble the other one and then slap it on there. Also gonna inspect the piston as well and the cylinder just to make sure I'm good to go. So another thing to keep in mind with these chains too is if they're worn is how much they flex like side to side. That'll give you a good indication of I mean from the best of my knowledge I'm gonna pull the new one out and see how that one how much that one flexes but either way I mean even if this this one is still good then I'm gonna keep it and I still got an extra so the moment of truth. So it looks like it, I mean that could be, that could have just been from the last portion. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, so. Definitely looks like it touched it, but I think this ridge right here is from when I was messing around with it and it got stuck at one point so i had to i was trying to twist it i'm sorry i was trying to push the piston up but i think the big thing is is to drop the piston see if there's any scoring or anything like that i think we're in good shape folks Plenty the plenty of the cross hatching left. Yeah, we're in good shape. Both of the chain guides look like they're in good shape as well. Uh, now it's cool because now I'll be able to put that other dowel pin in here that wasn't there I did end up getting one so be able to put that in put the new chain in and then uh, put get that head rebuilt put that on there put it all back together we're looking good so far
It's got some deposits. So, all right, that's good news, folks. So if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, go ahead and hit the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel, hit the alert bell, and that way you can come on back, check out what we got going on. So, all right guys, we'll see you in the next video. So take care, God bless, come on back.